Hello lovely humans and welcome back to my channel. If you are watching this on Wedding Chicks or over on Facebook, thank you so much for stopping by. One of my favorite things to do for events, for crafts, for even things within my own home is how can I DIY something without making it look like it's been DIY'd? You know what I mean? Because sometimes you look at stuff and you're like, oh, did you make that yourself? Oh, did your kid make that? I could tell. So that is something that I find myself, I challenge myself to do both in work and in anything that I do in my home or in my personal life is if I'm going to DIY something, how do I make it look like a professional did it? So for this week, I decided to put together a tutorial on a summer inspired DIY wedding sign. Oh. What is it with me and like picking stuff up upside down? This is the sign that I put together for this week's video and I really like it. And no, you do not need to be a calligrapher to pull this thing off. Lord knows I am no calligrapher. My writing can get a little chicken scratchy at times. So the fact that I was able to put something together like this, I think is pretty darn cool. Basically all you need is a short amount of supplies and a little bit of time and you too can make this exact thing on your own. So without further ado, let's jump right on in. So first and foremost, you are going to need a blank canvas, blue painter's tape, the selection of acrylic paints that match your color palette. And obviously, since we're not finger painting today, you're going to need a selection of paintbrushes as well. And of course, the easy tracer. This is the only reason I was able to get this project done. Along with a tape measure, a laser level, a pencil, and a couple of Sharpies. Using my trusty blue painter's tape, I am sectioning off each of the corners because I want to add a pop of color that works really well with our palette. Now be sure to smooth it out really well because the canvas isn't flat and you want to make sure none of the paint bleeds through to the other side. I really happen to like it when things may be asymmetrical, but they're still balanced. So I went back in with secondary color and made sure to add a pop of yellow on each side. So a larger pop of yellow on the side that had a little bit of pink and a smaller pop of yellow on the side that had a lot of bit of pink, just to even things out. Here's where the personalization comes in. I had already known that I wanted to go with a tropical look, so quickly searched for some free images, realized I wanted a sketch instead of a full color image, and selected my favorite. Next, I jumped on over to Word and put all of the words out that I wanted on my sign. Fiddled around with a couple different fonts until I found the exact vibe that I was going for. I like mixing a scripty font with a, like a block letter font just because I love the juxtaposition of what that creates. And don't worry too much about the size of the font because the tracer will take care of that for you. It's best to set up your tracing environment in a dark space. So foolishly, I decided to do some in my garage, which was really, really hot. So I lined everything up, grabbed a Sharpie, and started outlining the first leaf. When working with a tracer, it's almost like when you're trying to do something backwards in a mirror, and when you push left, it goes right, and it can get really confusing at times, so sometimes it takes a long time to line up exactly what you want to do. But be sure to take your time because getting the right placement is absolutely key. I was a little concerned that the Sharpie would show too much through the paint, so I decided to swap out for a pencil instead and trace over the next few leaves to see if I could see any sort of a difference when it came to the painting portion of things. And surprisingly, I actually found the pencil to be a lot easier to work with because I was less worried about screwing up because I knew I could erase it in the end if I did something wrong. When it came to the lettering, I busted out my crazy. <laughs> I got a laser level and a tape measure to make sure everything was centered and everything was level because I did not want this thing to come out crooked. Using the pencil again, I outlined each of the letters. Because the script has a lot of thinner points and thicker points within each letter, I actually made sure to outline even the thinner points so when I went back through with a sharpie or a paintbrush, it would give me a little more wiggle room to work with instead of a super thin pencil line that would be really hard to replicate. The block letters are a lot easier to screw up because they're in a perfectly straight line. So again, I busted out the laser level and made sure everything was perfectly straight before I started outlining them in pencil uh, because they're not as forgiving as the script is because they're in a freaking straight line. 
when I was finally done outlining everything, thank you, Lord, for getting me out of that friggin' hot garage, I went in and started painting each of the leaves. Now, I chose slightly different shades of green and decided to play around with it. You don't have to get this adventurous. You can keep everything pretty plain, pretty simple, or if you're more artistic than me, which is probably most people, um, you can go to town and do as many crazy colors as you want to. But I chose to do a variety of greens to try to make these leaves look as lifelike as possible, um, even though I have no idea what I'm doing. itself, I chose to not use a paintbrush because I did not trust my skills at all with those super, super tiny lines. So instead I went back to the Sharpie and drew in each and every one of the letters because I felt like it gave me a lot more control than a paintbrush could. Now this may not be the case for you, you may have a lot steadier of a hand or actually know what you're doing with a paintbrush, but uh, if you're a little in the dark like me, then grab a Sharpie, it'll be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the moment where I realized that block lettering was the worst idea ever. I can't get a whole lot of super straight lines, it's turning out okay, but I'm definitely not in love with it, so next time, not doing block lettering. Just learn from my mistake. Holy smokes, y'all. I have so much lipstick on my teeth. It was not even funny. So sorry for like the Count Dracula moment uh, at the intro of this video. <laughs> Hopefully y'all can't tell because there's a lot. Whew. Okay, now that we dodged that awkward bullet, what do you guys think? Uh, I'm honestly, um, I'm usually pretty critical on my DIY stuff, but this is one that I really, really enjoy the results of. It's bright, it's vibrant, I like that it's on canvas. It just kind of pushes the envelope a little bit. If I were to do this again, there's a few things I would do differently. One, I would not have done the Sharpie at the bottom. I would have stuck to all pencil because it just made it a lot easier. However, when I was doing the pencil, I didn't pick up my hand as I was writing and definitely dragged some of the lead, basically, across the top of the canvas. So then I had to go back in with an eraser afterwards and clean up some of those marks. The scripting turned out beautifully. I'm, whoa, I cannot. This, it honestly, it looks so good and I'm really happy with it. I probably wouldn't have done block lettering with the tracer though because it's so hard to get a sharp, fine edge. Or maybe this kind of lettering style is better reserved for like a, a Cricut machine or a stencil or something like that. So unless you have a really steady hand or a really good eye um, or are a calligrapher and therefore do not need a tracer, so get up out of here, um, I maybe would have done this lettering slightly different. But at the end of the day, I'm pretty enamored with it. Shh, I'm vlogging. So honestly, with this bad boy, the sky is the limit. You could also use it for home crafts, you could use it for making your own artwork, perhaps painting a mural on a wall, if you are that ambitious. I most certainly uh, am not, partially because we're renting and partially because that scares me. So if you are looking for a DIY project, I hope you found yourself inspired by this. I hope you go out and pick yourself up one of these easy tracers. I got mine at Michael's. I know you can order it online. Um, or pick it up in store. I will link that down below. So that's all we have for today, folks. I hope that this week's video inspired you. I hope that it encourages you to push some of the limits and try something new when it comes to planning and decorating your event. And I hope you pick up one of those easy tracers because they are game changers. As always, a huge shout out to my gal pals over at Wedding Chicks for hosting this week's video. And until next week, bye guys.